people that, that did a lot of really good work, but I think there were some things that were that that were missing in the way you, you answered these and um and I'm gonna do my best to to try to to make it so it's um it's really clear what you what you need to to do for each part. Um, I think that this would be a pretty common question. In fact, AP has kind of said that this would be a pretty common question that they would ask where it's, it's pretty calculator agnostic in the sense that it doesn't, you, you don't need to have a calculator to do any, anything special on here. I think that some of the things that I saw were um, in part, just generally right now in part, um, Part A, I saw a lot of people still simplifying things and 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 don't because if you simplify it incorrectly, you run into some real problems where you're gonna you're gonna get caught up. Um, I think I saw people in part B not really adhering to the fact that it's an it's asking for an absolute maximum, not a relative one. So you have to kind of Think about what that means and what those four steps are that we that I covered in the notes several times. Um, in part C, I think people kind of got confused and thought, "Oh, are they asking me if um, if the limit as x goes to zero exists, or are they asking me for each limit?" They're asking you actually for each limit on that one, and they weren't asking you for the for the limit as x goes to zero overall. It's just asking what's the limit as x goes to zero from the left-hand side of g prime and what's the limit as x goes to zero from the right-hand side of g prime. Um, we'll go, and I'll go through all these in detail. And then finally on part D, it actually, um, anytime you see this this year, you should be really um, suspect to think, wow, this could be an opportunity that they're gonna ask me to do L'Hopital's rule. And it, and it was this way. And last year was one of the first times they put what we tell school on the free response question. And they were really strict on how students needed to answer it to get credit for it. So they couldn't just um, throw L'Hopital's rule in there and, and kind of do some chicken scratch work that didn't, um, that didn't address the components of L'Hopital's rule um, more specifically to get the point. So they were a little bit more strict about that last year. And I'm not sure what they'll do this year, but I'm, I'm going to bank on what they did last year with this. So, so let me go through, um, through all of these. Um, so instead of, this is just a, a picture of what you got in the, in school with me. So the first one, um, in part A, you are given that f of x is equal to 3x plus the integral from zero to x of g of t dt. So you're given that. And so if I were gonna, I'm gonna, I'll do all the, the work that I, that I would expect you to do on the exam. Um, I'll do that in, in, in black, just to, to kind of keep it consistent. But if I'm, if I'm going through this, the first thing I'm asked on this is I'm asked to figure out, so for part A, I'll, I'll actually move down here. For part A, I'm asked to figure out what is f of seven? Based on, on what f of x is, that would be three times seven plus this integral. And, and if you kind of think about what that integral is, that integral is, um, is the, area under the curve from zero to seven. So it's this area that would exist right here, which would be a negative quantity, along with this area that's in right here. So it's all of that stuff. So if I, and, and so you think about that, well, well, the area in this spot is, um, half a circle. The area of this one is just three units. Okay, so if I were going to kind of complete this this answer, it would be the the half a circle. And I know that 
I would have an, a negative here because it's below the x-axis. It's half a circle, so it's one half pi times the radius squared, then plus three more units. And I wouldn't simplify this. I know that you can do three times seven and get 21 and add three to it and get 24. But I can tell you that I saw at least two papers where student, when I was in your papers, when I, when I was grading it, that people simplified this incorrectly. If you leave it like that, it's correct. It shows the method, it shows the work, and it, and it shows the correct answer. And if you start to get, um, to, to get into the simplifying of, of arithmetic stuff, you're only, only open yourself up to ridicule. So just leave it like that. So then when you were supposed to find F prime of seven, they would have asked you to, to do something with this. They would have wanted you to kind of take this f of x that we have, and they would have wanted you to say, well, f of x, f prime of x would be equal to 3 plus g of x. Now, the reason it would be 3 plus g of x is if you think about this up here, if we differentiate this, looking up here, f prime of x the derivative of 3x is just 3, and the derivative of this integral is, remember that derivatives and integrals undo each other, so we would just get um, g of x for that part. So it's important that on this kind of thing, it's important that you would write that down, actually. It would be really important to show that work right there. Now, you could potentially embed this in the work of um, where then f prime of 7 is equal to 3 plus 3. And the reason we got 3 on that is g of 7 is equal to three. You wouldn't necessarily need to write that part out, but if you go back up here, this is this is the graph. Here's g of seven. That's g of seven it equals three. So you'd end up using using that piece there. Now I know that I do know that this simplifies to six. I am very comfortable that you guys can simplify that to six. Just don't. Just leave it. Leave it alone. Because just simplifying it to six means that you um, you may miss some points. Because if I didn't have that g prime of x thing there, and and tr truly they wanted to see did so, uh, didn't did a student take three plus three? Because that's different than taking two plus four and getting six. You really needed three plus three on that. So it's important that you would you would list that. Now that's part A right there. One note that, that I'm going to talk about is it's really um, difficult when you guys jump right into part B without sort of separating things out. So on the actual exam, what I would encourage you to do is to draw some kind of a line in between there to say, okay, now I'm done with part A. You would normally get that opportunity on an, on an AP exam. They, they'd say, okay, well, um, well, with that, you, you, you get a new place to, to do the next work. So then you get to part B. And if we go back up to part B, a couple things I want to highlight on this. Um, anytime they talk about a closed interval, and then they talk about maximum value, together those things represent an absolute maximum. They don't use the word relative. They only use the word maximum. That should clue you in that it's an absolute maximum. A closed interval should also include you in that it's an absolute maximum. Remember that when it says justify your answer, that the chart is the, is, is the justification for it. So when you're doing this, we're going, if we're going to go through the, the, the steps of this, the first step would be to find the critical numbers. So the critical numbers are when 
f prime is equal to zero. Well, if we look back and we've already worked with f prime, you've already worked with it right up there, that's f prime. So we need to know when zero is equal to three plus g of x. And remember, we're working with the interval from negative four to three. So we need g of x to equal three on that interval in order to find our critical numbers, right? Does that make sense? Are we okay with that? If you think about what that means is that means we'd have to go up here to this graph. And remember, now we're working on this interval for this one. Does it have to equal negative three? Um, yes, negative three, sorry, thank you. So it needs, needs to equal negative three. Now we're working on this interval, right? We're working on this interval from negative four to three. So on that interval, there's only one time this, this, this graph of g equals negative three, and it happens to be at one of the endpoints. So there actually, there, there are no critical values. Some of you decided that zero was a critical value. And in this case, zero is really not a critical value. I really didn't know how to penalize per people on that. They didn't put that, but there really aren't any critical values or the only critical value is when, when um, G is equal to three. So when X equals three, so, you know, this critical value is when X is equal to three, which also happens to be one of the endpoints. So that's the only critical value. So now what I would do is I would make a table and my table would list negative four and it would list three because those are the only two values. Normally there might be a critical value in between there that I'd have to find, but I don't, I, I don't this time. Now I have to figure out the value of f of x. Remember f of x was three x plus the integral from zero to x of g of t dt, okay? So if, if and, we, and we're gonna then figure out what the, the absolute minimum is. So if I'm doing this problem, trying to zoom in and it's not letting me do that there. Um, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at three times negative four minus, one half times four times two. Now, if you're wondering where the heck did he get that, that thing? Well, the three times negative four is pretty clear because I just put a negative four in for X. Now, if you look at the other one, I'm, I'm, I'm doing um, from zero to, um, to, to negative four, of this graph up here. So go back, going back up to this graph, from zero to negative four would be this space in here. And that's that triangle. And that triangle has a negative quantity because it's above the x-axis, but we're really moving from the, from the right to the left. So that's a negative area, and that's why I ended up subtracting down here in this part. That's why there's a subtraction in there. Now, the next thing um, that you'd have on here is you'd have 3 times 3 plus the integral from 0 to 3. I'm not going to write that up, but the integral from 0 to 3 is a quarter of the circle. I'll go back up there in a second. It also happens to be negative because it's below the x-axis, but we'd have neg minus a quarter of the circle. And so we'd have that. Now, you don't have to do a lot of simplification, and I wouldn't really do a lot of simplification. Maybe if you have a little uh, calculator next to you if you needed to, if you couldn't recognize that 
that this one is bigger. That's the bigger one. So then x equals three is the is is where the um, where there's an absolute maximum. So that's where there's an absolute maximum. Now if I go back up here and I and I kind of highlight that that quarter circle just for you if you're if you're wondering where I got that quarter circle, um, I got that quarter circle from this spot right here. That's where that that's where that's a quarter of a circle that has a radius of three. That's why I used minus one half one fourth pi times three squared. Any questions on that piece of work? I'm gonna scroll out so you can see that whole thing. Hopefully I can get it. So that's part B. That's what part B looks like. If you think about the steps, the first step is finding the critical numbers within the interval. I saw people looking for stuff outside of the interval and that didn't work very well for them. Um, then making a table with the x values of the endpoints and the critical numbers, figuring out the y value is the third step, and then answering whatever the question is. In this case, the question was, what is the x value that that happens at? Any questions on that before I go on? I have a question. So how yeah. do you, how come you don't, you said something about not using zero, how come you don't, or why is it not, why doesn't it count? Um, so you needed to, to, so finding those critical values would be where the derivative equals zero and all this work um, up here was to find the critical values. And so the critical values are when that derivative equals zero. And so the derivative of f prime was um, was what we had found up there in part, part A. So f prime is equal to three plus g of x. So we wanna know when that equals zero. Well, that's when g of x equals negative three. And g of x is this graph up here and it equals negative three only one place. It doesn't equal negative three when x equals zero. So we're kind of overlapping the, this function and, and notice that this function f is given as part of this integral and then we're given the graph of g. So, so there's a lot of overlap in integration and differentiation on this part. But then why can you use negative four as well then? Because because negative four, uh, why can't you use negative four as a no? Because don't didn't you use negative four as a critical point? No, Did I you... used negative four as an endpoint because so when oh, we go back right. to like finding an absolute maximum, you uh, find the critical numbers, you make a table with the critical numbers and the endpoints, you calculate the y values, and then you answer the whatever the question is. Those are those four steps. So like on the AP exam, I would, that's one of the things that I would have, you know, next to me for notes to say, what are those four steps? And if you go back to, to a couple of the, of the reviews that I did last week, and even maybe on Monday, I think it was there, um, I went through those four steps and, it, and it'd be a good thing to have those notes next to you. But that's why the only values I used was negative four and three in that table. Three happened to be a critical value, but it also happened to be an endpoint. Any questions on that? Okay, so again, next thing I would do is I would separate this with a line of some sort because again, I, I found it really challenging for me to grade your papers when things weren't separated. And so then I'd put part C here. And um, part C, if I go back up here, and it is um, for each, of the limit as x goes to zero from the left hand side of g prime and the limit as x goes to zero from the right hand side of g prime find the value or state that it does not exist so it's really two questions within this one part it's saying what's the what's the derivative or what's the limit of the 
of the, really the slope of this graph as we approach zero from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side. And it's not asking us to evaluate it in general, just evaluate those limits separately. Okay, that's what it, it's asking you to evaluate those limits separately. So when I, when I go down and do that and I think about that, um, number one is, as I saw some people just put like, um, for one of the answers, I saw somebody just put down negative one half and that was it. That's all they had on their paper. Um, and, and, and I don't know what that means, right? I mean, that, that's what they, that's what AP calls kind of a bald answer. They, it's an answer without any, any knowledge of where did that even come from or how am I supposed to, to, um, to grade that. So what you really should would want to put down is you want to really restate this one because they did ask two questions on this. They said, what's the limit is, um, as x goes to zero from the left-hand side of the derivative? And we're not talking about f anymore. We're talking about just g. So the derivative of g is the slope of g. And in that case, if you go back up to that graph, from the left-hand side, it has a slope of one-half. Uh, or negative one half. It's just the slope of that line. It's going down, down one over two each time. Now, the second one is the limit as x goes towards zero from the right hand side of g prime. And um, that one, you could write negative infinity, or you could write does not exist. My bias is always to lean towards does not exist. Because if you forget to write the negative in there, you screw up and you, and you, and you accidentally write infinity rather than negative infinity, um, then, then you kind of you kind of lose a point based on just a, a, a just one bad error. And I would just write does not exist instead. Now, if we go back up and look at those, so think about what those two answers are, and I'm going to scroll back up so you can see where I pulled those values before I ask you if you have any questions, is I go back up to this, this graph, and if you look at the blue arrows from the left-hand side, notice the slope of that line is negative one-half. That's why from the left-hand side, the, the, der the um, derivative of g is, um, is negative one-half or the limit. And if you look at the, the right-hand side, um, it's kind of increasing without bound. G is increasing without bound. But it's um, but if you drew tangent lines, um, those would be negative sloping tangent lines. That's why it's negative infinity rather than positive infinity. But again, I would have just written does not exist because I think you'd, you'd, um, you'd be safer on that. Any questions on that before I go on to part D? Um, say you made a mistake and said that neither of them exist. Would you get partial credit because the one doesn't exist? Um, so that's a good question. Um, it would really depend on how you um, on how you communicated because if you communicated something along the lines of like I think back uh, um, to your specific one, your specific paper, um, it is true that the limit as x goes towards zero of g prime of x does not exist. If you just wrote that third part on there, um, it doesn't really answer the questions. So you might be you might be in a position where you actually do what what AP kind of refers to is that you're saying too much, um, and unless it matches up with the other stuff, you may or may not lose the credit lose the points for it, and it kind of depends on where AP draws the line on that. Um, okay. So, for whatever that's worth, and I know what you're talking about, um, Liz, with with your with your response, but. Um, I think that that was a, a case of not reading what they asked more than reading what um, what you were supposed to do. So yeah, I did a really bad job of reading what they asked, like in every single part. <laughs> I would agree. 
But that honestly, I mean, in all all intent, all for all intents and purposes, really, this is designed. I mean, I'm really trying to say, well, let's try some of these, and and so that next Tuesday, when you see a similar question, you'll go, oh, I already made that mistake. I won't make that mistake again. Um, so don't feel bad if you got a a bad score on this, um, because that's not what this is about. This is really about what can I do to correct these mistakes and not make them next, next week, honestly. So, um, so don't, don't feel bad. Don't say, Oh, my grade is going to go drastically down because of these. That's not really the intent of these. The intent of these are really mainly for you to just practice them. In fact, um, mostly I'm going to give just, did you participate in the activity points for this? Because that's what I really want. I want you to participate and do the work and see what works best for you. Does making a picture work best for you? Does scanning it work best for you? What concepts do you need to refresh yourself on? Um, where did you go about reading the question wrong? All those things are really the important pieces of this. So then we get to part D and, and there's a lot of you that I, I felt like I wanted to give you points because I knew what you were thinking and what you were doing. But the problem is, um, I know how AP graded this part last year, and I think they're going to grade it this way this year. And it's mainly that they're really strict about how they want you to invoke L'Hopital's rule. So going back to this question, and it's, you know, find this, it's, it's find this new limit here. As X goes towards negative 2 of F of X plus 7 divided by E to the 3X plus 6 minus 1. Um, so let me go down and show you how I would probably have answered this if I were a student doing this work. And so, uh, let me see if I can make sure I can remember this. It goes as X goes towards negative two. X is plus seven, I think. Hopefully that's right. Um, and it's E to the three X plus six minus one. That's right. Okay, so if I saw this and I was answering this question and I was doing this on the AP exam, first of all, um, avoid the, the urge to start writing equals next to this, okay? Um, I saw some people do this and right away, if you do anything like this, you, the game's over for you you're really out of the whole thing uh, because it, it doesn't equal that. Um, you've now said something and you've um, you said something that's incorrect mathematically and it will cause you great pain because you will not get anything for that. So if you go over here on the side and you kind of go, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little scratch work over here and I'm going to do F of negative two, my plus seven, divided by e to the 3 times negative 2 plus 6 minus 1, and I figure out that that's 0 over 0. Now, really what this is, is this is really what I would call scratch work. Okay, this is just you thinking. That is not work. That is just you thinking. Suddenly you go, hey, I know I need to use Hopital's rule. That's what I know I need to use. So now I'm going to do it more formally. So now I'm going to be more formal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, what I'm going to first look at is the limit as X goes towards negative two of F of X plus seven. And I'm going to calculate this. And I already know what it equals. You already know that this equals zero. Okay, you already know that this equals zero. We actually did that work in your little thought process over there. And the limit as x goes towards negative two of e to the three x plus six minus one also equals zero. And that's a really important thing. Um, 
all the functions are continuous, which is an important piece. It's the only way you can use L'Hopital's rule is if those functions are, are continuous. Then Then you can use L'Hopital's rule. Now it's important. It's important that if you just, you know, take take what, you're, what we're trying to do. We're looking at this limit here. We're looking at this limit. If you suddenly jump to this, and that's taking the derivative of the numerator, and the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of the denominator, we would have had to use um, the chain rule. We would have had to take e to the 3x plus 6, differentiates to e to the 3x plus 6 times 3, that both the plus 7 on the numerator and the minus 1 on the denominator both um, differentiate to 0. If you just wrote this, it's not acceptable. Because what you are missing is you are missing that this is really the limit as x goes towards negative 2 is what you're really asking about. That's what you're really asking about. So if you leave off that limit notation, you never really did L'Hopital's rule. You sort of halfway did it. Now if you go in here and you figure out um, f prime of negative 2, you'll figure out that that is... 3 plus 1, and if you put in negative 2 into the denominator, you figure that that's 3. You could simplify that if you wanted to, to 4 over 3. But one of the things that they did last year that I also kind of graded you on this year is if you just got 4 thirds, you didn't get credit for it unless you were formal about how you invoked L'Hopital's rule. And so that's where some of you maybe got three-fourths or four-thirds, and you were kind of like, well, I, why didn't I get credit for that? I should have gotten credit. I got the right answer. Um, this particular part last year, uh, which is why I'm, I did it yesterday, um, why I gave a sign this yesterday, is they were really strict about how people invoked L'Hopital's rule. And if you didn't do it correctly, um, it became a, they, they just basically counted off for it. Um, they said, well, we're not going to give them credit for any part of this. Um, now, remember, you know, if you get seven on a, on a question like this, six or seven points on a question like this would get you a five on the AP exam. So you could have gotten part A, B, and C right and gotten seven out of nine points and, and gotten a five on the AP exam. You actually technically could have missed one more point earlier on and um, and gotten gotten a five out of gotten a five on the AP exam. So you don't have to be perfect to get a good score on the AP exam. But I'm pretty certain that if you have to use L'Hopital's rule next Tuesday, that there will be a number of you that suddenly realize, oh, I'm going to be formal on this and I'm going to I'm going to do some of these things that I'm supposed to do and invoke it in the right way. Any questions on that? Can you like make it clear what it like, how to do it formally, how to write it out formally? So formally, um, things that you would need to have on there, you would need to have the limit of the numerator. So that part. You'd need to have the limit of the denominator, both equaling zero. So that shows that you knew that you had to kind of evaluate the limit of the numerator and the limit of the denominator separately and realize that they were both zero. You then had to somehow say that the functions are continuous. And then you, t you technically wouldn't say, well, then I need to, to do L'Hopital's rule. Then you would want to invoke L'Hopital's rule, which is that, and then evaluate L'Hopital's rule. Evaluate it after. So those things that I just highlighted 
would be what you would formally want to do it. Now, me personally, if I were doing this problem, when I did this problem, I also had this on my on my side note because I didn't know if I needed to use L'Hopital's rule, right? I mean, you have to kind of get to a point where you can figure out, do I even need to use L'Hopital's rule? So I had that blue highlighted stuff to kind of figure out, do I even need it? But I really need to have that off to the side as scratch work, not really attached to my problem. The, the issue comes is if you write something like this, you're now out of the game completely. So you can't write this. You, that is a really bad thing to write because suddenly that's really bad mathematics. And, and suddenly um, AP draws a line and says, well, we can't, if you write bad mathematics, we're going to read it and not give you credit for, for, for stuff because you're kind of what they say, they kind of claim is you're kind of rubbing it in our face on that one. And we got to read it, even though we don't want to, we're re we, so I'm even going to erase this because I don't even want you to think that that's an option. So that's what I would put on there. Does that answer your question, Maddie? Um, yeah. So can you just leave the answer as what you have on the bottom? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and if you wanted to simplify it to four thirds, that's fine, but I just wouldn't, right? I mean, I just, I just wouldn't um, do my simplifying on that because, because I'd worry if I, in the heat of the moment, I might do that incorrectly or write it bad. Even though maybe I could do the three plus one and get four and write it as four thirds, um, you know, I could do that. Any other questions on this problem? All right, um, I gave you a new problem. Um, I'm leaning really, 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 really heavily towards using the scan feature. If you have an Android, um, I'm just not sure how that works. Um, but one of the things that I will tell you, because I, I don't know, I mean, you can use Cam Scanner. The other thing I'm leaning towards, and I'm going to show you this today's on today's answer key, um, is I am finding that the, I'm going to show you a clean version of something. Um, I am finding that people that do it, do these answers on um, non, lined paper. So let me, let me find one. Let me just, I am finding a couple things. I'm finding that, and I can't find one that's on. Let me see if I can find one up here. Um, when when I see ones that are done on paper that's that's not lined, and I think that I know somebody who did this. Um, I find the non-lined paper actually way easier to read, and let me show you what I mean. So here's a here's an example. You guys, hopefully, you guys can see this, um, and it's kind of picking on Olivia a little bit. But um, notice this was a picture that was taken. Okay, this wasn't even a scanned version, and so this is a picture that was taken. Um, it was in black ink. Um, it was, um, it was done on non-lined paper and I found this significantly easier to read, um, as a, as in, in grading. Whereas when I saw ones that were, um, that I'm going to pick on Anna maybe right now, um, this was actually pretty good, but to me, the, the, and I don't know how you guys feel, but to me, the lines on this paper sort of became a little distracting. And they're even worse if the, if the, Anna did a really good job on 
on um, using really good color black ink. And this is, again, a picture, picture um, really good black ink. But even so, I thought the lines were, were a little bit um, harder to read. I actually um, prefer the no line paper. I just thought it looked better. I thought it was easier to read. And again, you're trying to create something that when you get done with this, that your paper is as easy to read as possible because you don't want to let it, you don't want to get into a situation where even though Muhammad got a six out of nine on this, it was really difficult to read. Um, it was really a hard thing necessarily to read. So here's a case where notice that um, parts A and B sort of run together, right? See, you can see how they run together. I mean, it's a lot of really, really good work in here um, in, 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 in the work that, that he did, but it all kind of ran together and it made it really hard for me to, to kind of grade on here. So um, it became really difficult to, to, to kind of sift through. And I don't really want you to, to kind of go into a, something that you do really good work and it's hard to read, especially if your handwriting is at all suspect. Um, you know, you look at, you look at um, Maddie's handwriting and it's, it's pretty fantastic. Um, and so when you, when you read it, it, it's really easy to read Maddie's handwriting. I mean, her handwriting is, is phenomenal. Even there, the, um, the lines on the graph paper sort of are distracting to me. I think it would be fine, but, but they're sort of distracting. But I think her handwriting is, is super clean and super easy to read. Even You can even see where the breaks go on her paper where she kind of skips some lines on here. And that's where I would... Um, encourage you to 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 think about that as you're as you're going through um, as you're going through this you know and same thing you know on this one when I pull up Dahlia's um, it's not small anymore <laughs> um, but you can change your I mean and and like I should show you Anna's today but even I mean here Dahlia's this is a picture and it doesn't look nearly as good as the as the um, as the scan that she did today, and she'd even agree that the scan was was fabulous today. The scan worked out worked out great, but um, but this is pretty clear where everything breaks down. Now, what would I do? Is I draw a line right in here. I draw a line right in here to give it even more clear definition into to what to what you have written down in your paper. So it's just some things that that you know we're we're kind of guinea pigs on this in a sense that you may take other AP exams later on in the in the exam thing and you'll have some of this kind of nailed down. Um, but um, Elizabeth and I were talking about um, typing the work in, and I found it super difficult to type the work in. Um, I don't know if you happen to look at the typed version. Yes, of yesterday's work that I put in here. Um, but if you didn't get a chance to look at that, I'd encourage you to look at it because I would go away from that. I looked at that. I tried to do that today and I found it super um, cumbersome to, to type these things in, even though I had said earlier that typing it was, was a fine thing to do. I didn't think it was easy to do at all. And I would kind of discourage you, especially as good as those is those other, you know, this was a picture it was taken outside. I thought that was pretty good. Um, but this is the typed response of this particular question and anything that involved limits. I thought it, I thought some of this stuff was awful to try to do. I thought it was terrible to try to communicate that. I, I would have needed to write it out and then type it in, and that would have just been a waste of time. And I thought I think that would have been that would have been awful. But here is the here's the the picture version of the paper, which is, is okay, but um, the same thing. I just came inside after doing that and took a PDF of it. And this was the PDF version. 
And this was just taken from an iPhone 8 under the, with the notes thing. And this is what it turned out. And I thought this was, I mean, boy, anybody could read this thing in here. You know, you could read that with anybody. And I didn't even separate things out. I'm starting to talk about separating things out because of the stuff, the work that I've gotten today. So that's why this is kind of a work in progress. I'll look at some of the, the there's a couple of comments in here. Um, so um, Hayden, I, I, yeah, you're, I, um, you couldn't use cam scanner anymore. That's the clarification. So the reason they changed that is um, they were having an issue with the software they were using to identify plagiarism. Um, and they were not going to, and the software that they were going to use, or that they were using, wasn't going to be able to identify plagiarism from a handwritten scan, a handwritten PDF. But they fixed that, and now they can identify plagiarism with a handwritten PDF. So then they changed their stance on that, and they did that between Sunday when I sent that out and Monday when I when I sent out a new thing. So that's why this is kind of ever evolving. Um, it, it, so you can submit a PDF. Um, it says that you can't in the, Maddie, it does say that you can't in the video. I agree with you. It does say that. Um, but that's changed. That stance changed. The, the key though is, and I don't think I took a picture of it, but I'm going to try to do a video of it. When I did the practice submission, so if you go to, um, if you go to today, uh, actually not today, I think it's, if you go to this exam information and you go to exam demo and you even just go in here and it won't let me do it very quickly. If I go to practice, um, when I go through here, and all this stuff would be in there, after this five minutes, it would it would let me submit. Um, up here at the top, instead of first name, last name here, it's over on this side, it says submit a picture, and over here it says submit a text file. When you submit a text file, that's when you're submitting a PDF. So you're So once you create PDFs from your camera, you're actually not submitting a picture anymore. You're submitting a PDF. And that's the video that I'm going to make later today. And that's actually changed since Sunday um, because they got it figured out and they realized that, um, that they needed to figure it out. So they did a great, AP did a great job responding to feedback. And that's the, that's the way I'm leaning. But that's why even today, in today's assignment, I said you have to do two pages and submit it as one file. So it's in the cam scanner, it's called a batch. In, um, in the notes on the iPhone, it just means that you have to take, when you use the notes thing, you end up taking two pictures that are turned into PDFs and that's what's used um, so that PDF file that is created is two pictures, um, sort of like, let me show you an example of it. Here's Anna's today. This is Anna's one PDF. Okay, so it's one file, but notice it says one of two pages up here. And Anna put three up here. Uh, put B and, and she did, you know, Anna's going to end up over here. She's going to put her AP reader number and her and her initials under here on the real thing. And there's the first page and there's the second page. And I would guess that Anna did that using the notes feature on her phone because if she used cam scanner, there's little watermark stamp down there that says cam scanner. Anna, give me a thumbs up if you use the notes thing. Yeah, yeah I use the notes. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's not hard to do, but it is something you need to practice, right? I mean, it is something you need to practice, which is why I'm, I'm saying practice it. Um, does that answer your question, Hayden and Maddie? 
Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Is there anything else? Sorry, I was a little bit absent yesterday and Monday, maybe even, but I came down with the with the flu actually, so I was in bed most of the day yesterday. Um, I got up for office hours, but that was about it. Anybody have any questions on anything I can do more for you today? Did this help? And would you like me to do the same thing with, to with today's one tomorrow? You can give me a thumbs up if you don't want to speak out loud. Okay. So I will do this again. I will do this again tomorrow. I'll give you another another exam question tomorrow. Um, again, I really am not trying to overload you, so please don't take it that way. I'm just trying to say, let's get all this in before next Tuesday, um, including if we need to do something over the weekend. I know that usually we don't work on the weekends, but or at least I'm not available on the weekends, but I'm going to be available for this class on the weekend because I feel like I, I owe it to you. Um, and, um, and then just know that I will give you a pretty good break after the exam. I know we won't be doing anything the rest of that week and, and, and maybe into the week after that a little bit. So I, I know I've been overloading you and, and I recognize that, but I also know that I, after our AP exam, I can, I can take a breather a little bit with you, but I know I've been giving you something every single day of the week and technically we're not even supposed to, but I, I sort of feel like I have to. Okay. Um, well, that's all I have. If you, if you have individual questions and you want them answered, I'd be happy to stay on and, and answer them. Thank you, Mr. Alquist. You. you got it. Thank you, Mr. Alquist. Elliot, did that make sense? Did that yeah. So, so like, especially like in the first or in the fourth one in uh, like number or letter D, I got so I got four thirds, but I like I didn't exactly show. So, did you take the full two points off for that then? If yeah, I, and that's if I that's, got four thirds but didn't show it formally. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where they that's where they really drew the line in last year, right? I mean, so I was surprised that they drew that line last year. Um, one of the benefits of me grading the AP exam for as many years as I've done, I mean, I've done it the past 14 years. Um, one of the things I get is I get to know some of the nuances on where are they going to draw the line on what credit is available when kids get credit and when they don't. And that's where they drew the line on that. So like last year... Um, I kind of, you know, expected them, honestly, when I went through, if I, if I presented this, this thing again, honestly, um, I, I, I kind of expected this to be worth two points, but I okay. expected the answer to get you credit without, um, I expected the answer to be, get you credit without giving, um, without doing a clear indication of L'Hopital's rule, but then they didn't do that last year. So they did not um, give you credit fact, if you got the answer right? Yeah, they didn't They they didn't give you credit. They said in order to get the answer answer point, you had to get the show your work credit. Um, and I thought that was a pretty harsh line that they, that they drew, but okay. it was the line that they drew. And, um, and, and as a result, that's, that's just the way it went. Right. I mean, that's just, that's just how, how we had to do it. And, um, and so that's what I wanted to grade this year. Um, I wanted to grade this problem specifically that way because I'm pretty confident that you knew what you were doing on that, Elliot, mm -hmm. and probably should get, I mean, in theory, knowledge-wise, you should get one point, mm -hmm. but, but you didn't because, because of the way they graded it. And I don't want you to be in a position where – I didn't tell you that. And then you walked yeah. in and said, well, that would have been really helpful to know. Um, and then was B also worth two points as well? So were B and D both worth two points? 
Uh, B was worth two points. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I got both points off on both of those. Yeah. B would have been All worth right. two points as well. Got All one right. point for the justification and one point for the answer. Yeah. And I yep. didn't do either. So. All right. Yeah. Great. All right.